people join churches, number one reason? Parking. Nope, not parking. Community or experience? Uh, community, sort of. Cynthia's on it as usual. The reverend is on it. It's, it's, it's warmth. Yes. The quotient hospitality. is hospitality, warmth, right? Um, one of my good friends is professor of evangelism church growth. His name is Ralph Watkins uh, at Columbia Seminary. And his research all indicates number one reason people join a church is not great preaching, not great theology, not inclusion, not exclusion, not parking, not convenience. Number one issue, and not tradition, number one is issue is warmth. Um, how do people know that this is a warm church? People say hi. People at, golly, Bronwyn. Um, Ralph, Ralph says people, people have to talk to people, right? Um, not assault them, but talk to them, okay? Um, and so I said to Dr. Watkins, Professor Watkins, cool, because most of the churches where I visit and preach, there are always whom? Greeters. Greeters. That takes care of it. Yeah. Was that you, Rose? Oh my gosh. No wonder you're an interim pastor. Because um, if you were installed, you'd have to you'd be out of here. So, um, but um, um, Rose is on it. So, right, um, uh, greeters are lovely. Um, but in uh, Dr. Watkins' research, the wrong people you choose to be greeters. Who do they talk to? They talk to each other and their friends. They tend to talk to each other and their friends. And I thought, that's not true. And then I was guest preaching at a church outside of Atlanta, and I had my robe over my left hand, and I was dressed in a suit, and I was going into this church, and I walked in, and there were two greeters, and I was trying to find the pastor's office because I was going to meet him there so I could get the liturgy. And the, the two greeters were standing there with bulletins doing what? Talking to each other. To each other, intently talking to each other. I went up and stood next to them. And this is big, like this is six feet two, right? Asian American in Atlanta. So like this is hard to miss, okay? Like I'm right there, I'm screaming visitor here, right? Um, you know, Presbyterian church, which is mostly whites. And so, and I've got this robe and everything, and I'm just, I just stood there to see. And sure enough, they're just talking to each other. And I said, ah, excuse me. And they both went, oh, good morning. I said, good morning. And then they? went back to talking and I was like seriously I'm standing right seriously and I said I'm sorry could I have a worship bulletin and they said oh sure and they gave it to me and went back to talking and I went I saw Ralph on Monday and said I'll be darned you are exactly right um, Ralph said greeters are okay but they don't necessarily count for warmth what has to happen is and these are people who actually have found us which is hard to do sometimes right They've researched and they're trying to find a church home. And so they come to us, and he said, at some point during the worship, somebody has to do what? Turn to them and welcome them. And so then I said, Ralph, a lot of the congregations where I preach, we have a moment called passing the peace. I said, that takes care of it, right? Go again, Rose. No, 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 make your, make your noise. Thank you very much. Um, Ralph said it could, it's possible, but only if it feels, here's an Emily's uh, um, conversation about authenticity was really rich up here, only if it feels authentic, right? If it feels perfunctory, then actually passing the peace could hurt. How do you know it's real? How do you know it's, the way people greet uh, Say more, Cynthia. I mean, we don't do it every Sunday, but when we do, there's this sense of, like, you see people actually hugging each other. Oh, uh, touching. The, Scary. Yeah, not just the, uh, or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you're sick, you don't want to pee, but when you see people hugging each other, yes. you can tell they know and they like each other. And Ralph also said, and he, this is, I mean, he's funny. He quantifies it and says there's also a proximity rule. If you move more than three feet away from your, where you're worshiping and you go across the sanctuary or the worship space to greet someone, then authenticity rises because people are actually making it an effort. But if it's just a matter of convenience, they're going to do three people who are right around them or two people and they're going to sit back down, then it's a problem. He said the most important modeling at that point is whom? The minister. You. You come out of the chancel and you walk down and you start talking to people. 
And people will cue off you because if you're out there talking to people, they're like, well, I guess we can keep on talking. And so they start talking, right? So I was in Topsham, Maine at one of our new church developments. They're meeting in a cafeteria for one of our middle schools. They have no building yet, and they may not, which is interesting. And I like that, actually, because they're trying to be agile, and they're not sure that the best use of mission dollars in the 21st century is to build a building. Um, so right now they're in a cafeteria in a middle school, and uh, I came out of the chancel, the front of the middle school cafeteria, and there are about 45 people out there worshiping that day, and I greeted my usual three or four, thinking, I'm done, right? And then I moved back because I'm going to get ready to preach. And the pastor came across the chancel to me, and she said, Roger, we're not done yet. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So I went and started greeting everybody else. At that new church development in Topsham, Maine, during the passing of the peace, everybody what? Talks to everybody, right? Tim's on it. And so, and, and so little kids were talking to older adults, middle-aged folks. I was listening to some of the conversations. We were making hair appointments. Um, there was a couple that were exchanging recipes, and it took us about 15 minutes, which is ridiculous, right? because God's attention span is only an hour, and we've just used up 15 minutes. Actually, sorry, white God's attention span is only an hour. If God is Brazilian, or Asian, or Latino, or Afro-Caribbean, etc., God seems to be able to pay attention longer. I think white God has ADD, ADHD, but... <laughs> God of color is able to, I mean, good grief, you Brazilians take three hours and it's ridiculous. And God seems to be able to pay attention during the course of the entire worship, right? Um, but only white gods, only have, we only have an hour. And so 15 minutes is taken up during the passing of the peace. I said afterwards at lunch, I said to the pastor and her husband, I said, seriously, like that happens every Sunday? And she said, Roger, we are a new worshiping community. We are desperately trying to find out who we are. And she said, sometimes I think the passing of the peace is the proclamation of the word, right? You model that, you model it. 